It was all Irish from the beginning. The team started off on a 12 to 4 run and they did not look back as they took this one wire to wire here tonight. It was jubilation here last year when the Penn Kingsmen won their fifth 4A state championship. Now in 2023, they put themselves in a position to etch their names amongst the Indiana high school baseball elite by going back to back. For Notre Dame All-American offensive tackle Joe Alt, today's pro day is a day that he's been waiting for since his childhood days in Minnesota. With scouts from all over the NFL watching, Alt showed why he's projected to be a top 10 pick in next month's NFL draft. Boiler fans are hoping that they do not witness a historic situation that Purdue found itself in last year as they became the second number one seed to lose to a 16 seed in March Madness history. Folks, I am still catching my breath from what was an incredible night of high school hoops. Tonight, legacies were cemented, teams survived, teams advanced, and permanent memories were made. We start tonight with some new developments from Bears camp. NBC Sports Chicago is reporting that Bears head coach Matt Nagy has been informed that he will not be brought back next season and that this Sunday's game against Minnesota will be his last with the organization. Well, just when you thought they were out, they pull you back in. The Chicago White Sox are just two games back in the Central Division, as well as two games back of the third wildcard spot. Here's the 0-2 on the way. There's just so much familiarity and just a like for one another. Got it. Under it. He makes the catch, and the South Bend comes, our Midwest League champions. In a sport where longevity can be rare. The 1-1 one -one pitch is launched. And at a level where turnover is frequent. Goodbye. Two Chicago-born guys continue to call the broadcast booth at Four Winds Field home. Max Toma, in his third season with the South Bend Cubs, and Brendan King, who's in his fourth year, say it comes down to one thing. Their meshing styles provide an enjoyable listening experience for fans. <laughs> I love to paint a picture. I love to just describe what's going on at a ballpark. I think Max compliments that so well because we can just bounce any idea off of one another. And no matter if it's the most random stat in the world, or just something happening at the park, we can make a conversation out of it. Towards the wall moves Aya Discernia looking up, and it's gone! King and Toma both call games for a variety of different teams across different sports. So what keeps bringing them back to the 574 every year for the intense grind that is a minor league baseball season? The guys on the field. We get to talk to them in the clubhouse, talk to them around BP, you know, chat with them on the bus, either, you know, to or from the stadium or on a four or five hour bus ride out to, you know, Cedar Rapids or Peoria. We get to know these guys and therefore we get to know them so well that, you know, we're friendly with them and we can share stories that maybe other people don't know fans can't get access to because they don't have direct access to the players. There's been no shortage of big moments for the pair to witness from a couple of no hitters. A swing and a miss and it's history to two league championships. Flips it to Reed, and it's over. It's not lost on them that they're likely calling plays for guys who could soon call Wrigley Field their home ballpark, and some who already do. You look at the Chicago Cubs roster right now, you see the likes of Christopher Morrell and Miguel Amaya. Miggy was here my first year. Morrell was here my second year in the title. I mean, you have Justin Steele now. I didn't even have Justin Steele as a player, and him and I have gotten close because of he still cares about the South Bend Cubs organization, so I think both Max and I have made some friends for life when it comes to the player side. South Bend Cubs baseball is on the air. Both broadcasters have aspirations of making it to the big leagues one day. And while they both may be in South Bend currently, the resources they have are on par with those at higher levels. We're both Chicago guys, so working for the Chicago Cubs organization is fantastic. And uh, we've had a great time, and I don't think there's many teams in high A or even in double A that have the quality of a broadcast that we do. Reporting for WSBT 22 Sports, I'm Leo Goldman. <laughs> Does Davion Goins have your attention? How about now? <laughs> if not, he should. The high-flying senior forward for Kasopoulos has been turning heads this season with his rim-rattling dunks. The energy and passion he shows on the court can be linked to early childhood battles with his brother Devante on their driveway hoop, where the older Goins brother would dominate. He'd always cross me over, dunk on me, and I just used to say, you just doing that because you taller than me, and then Grow, just growing up and then just practice trying to be better than him. He always talks to me at the game, tells me what I need to do, and I really try to listen to him and then put it into my game. Showtime today. <laughs> but his game includes much more than just spectacular dunks. Obviously the athleticism stands out. 
Uh, but it was really just the desire. I mean, he would text me six, seven o'clock in the morning in the middle of the summertime asking me if we can get in the gym. And I knew right there, I was like, the passion is there. Um, and if we can really hone that in on all his other skills, he'll go do big things. I'm finna pull out the nastiest duck. Davion is hoping that his passion for the game and desire to be the best will help him play at the next level, where he already has more than 10 offers. You can't just come and play and think, and think that you're going to be good on the court. You have to come put in that extra work to be successful. Just like in life with anything, you have to put in that extra work. There's a lot of different positions that he could play. You know, Some teams on a smaller school might try to put him down low. Some teams at a bigger school would play him out wide. And I think he has the talent to play both, which would really allow him to succeed at whatever level. Reporting for WSPT 22 Sports, I'm Leo Goldman. This sports segment on WSPT 22 is sponsored by South Bend Orthopedics. It was the first year in a new millennium. Y2K in the rearview mirror, the internet craze sweeping the nation. And Notre Dame hires a spunky young head coach with an affinity for turtlenecks named Mike Bray. Bray would go on to become the winningest coach in Irish men's basketball history and a fan favorite for the Irish faithful. Tonight at Purcell, one final home game for a man whose legacy will live forever in the Notre Dame history books. Following a video tribute, Bray entered Purcell Pavilion to a standing O. He saluted the crowd as he got near the bench. After 23 years, he's coaching his final game in this building tonight. Notre Dame hosting the conference leading Pitt Panthers. The Irish didn't really have any plans on rolling over. Marcus Hammond burying the three. That starts an 11-0 run to close out the first half. And then poor Mac Ryan driving to the basket. Count that baby and a foul. The Irish may be inspired by Bray led 25th ranked Pitt 42 to 28 at halftime. Let's move to the second half. Marcus Hammond doing some more damage, knocks down the three here to put Notre Dame up by 15. And then it's the super senior again, Cormac Ryan, picking the pocket and taking it all the way for the slam to put the Irish up 17. Notre Dame wins Mike Bray's final home game as head coach 88 to 81. And I'm now joined by WSBT 22 sports director Pete Byrne, who's live at Purcell Pavilion. Pete, an emotional night for Notre Dame, but able to end Mike Bray's final home game with a W. Take us through what you saw there tonight. Thanks, Pete. Well, staying on the hardwood for teams in Michigan this time of year is what you train for. It's postseason action in the Mitten State, and we've got squads that have their eyes on the prize, a state title their schools. We'll start tonight in Edwardsburg. Niles and Dwashiak squaring off in District 47. Niles was down double digits at the half, but they weren't going down without a fight. Madison Zach with the steal finds Elizabeth Vandepute down low for the score. But from there, it was all Dwashiak. End of the third. Maggie Weller from the parking lot. The long three is good to beat the buzzer and put her team up by 32. Chieftains win 54 to 29. So who will they face? Benton Harbor or Edwardsburg? Ben Harbor starting out strong. Desiree Kyles knocks down the J, getting the Tigers on the board first. The host Eddie's going toe to toe though. Mackenzie Scheibel, she's money from long range. Eddie's win it 53 to 43. They will face Dwajak in the district final on Friday.